How often during a session of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater have you wanted to continue your killer combo with a little bit of, well, killing? A headshot. There's a little something between the visceral lust for violence and that of racking up a big score, and the club attempts to interlink the two, directly and non-stop. There's a sort of shell story that attempts to drum up a vague notion of why these eight very distinct and very stereotypical men are on a killing spree, but it's best left forgotten. Instead, it's just a matter of choosing the killer who best fits your style. Then it's time to jack up the adrenaline and go for the golden bullet. The majority of the single player's bulk is spent in the tournaments, sprawled across locales of various degrees of decay, where you wage a war of carnage through several different events. You have to run laps, find exits, or survive in a specific area while scoring big points by quickly chaining kills together. The last bullet. There's not much else, and even between the events, it's very similar. Just keep moving, keep killing, and occasionally stay in bounds. Yeah. The new levels change the geometry, but all the modes are revealed within the first few matches. Beating levels unlocks them for single event challenges and for playlists, but they ultimately play out the same. Enemy AI is appropriately stupid, with the occasional dodge or blind fire from cover, but for the most part, they'll line up. Maps can be confusing sometimes, but just keep looking for the arrows to soldier on. A slight twist to the mayhem is the skull shots, little signs that you can shoot to add to your combo or keep it from bleeding out. They're typically in plain sight, but spending too much time seeking them out will definitely kill a combo, so multiple playthroughs are needed to ferret out the highest score. Multiplayer unlocks more modes with takes on VIP and protecting skull shots, while classic modes like Team Deathmatch and Free For All are present. One big caveat is spawn camping, especially in team modes. Don't be surprised if you fall into an endless loop of death, and it's made more frustrating by punishing spawn times. Multiplayer slows the pace down and adds more strategy, but that detracts from the single player's balls out methodology. It's a real one note game, and you can only hold that note for so long. <laughs> While the game loads, it scrolls tips. They mention things like timing reloads and shooting exploding barrels, but the club is pretty much all instinct. Levels don't really change anything, and you'll stop seeing new guns and enemies by the second locale. It's all just shooting people in the face because shooting people in the face will get you more points. It's addictive, and you'll debate for microseconds if you should spend the extra time for that headshot or just go for the easy kill and let your combo rise. The best moments are during the sieges, when you're confined to a small area. The club is stripped from any artifice here. You just stay put and repel the onslaught. You can risk going out of bounds for some health and sprint back before the explosive penalty to keep the combo climbing. The game's still fun online, but it also starts feeling dated, with weapon and spawn camping ripped straight from 1993. The club, on a whole, would have been a triple-A game back in the dawn of the PlayStation and N64 era. In 2008, its charms are still apparent and addictive, but a little too familiar. club comes across looking pretty good, if a little plastic. The character designs look a bit like comic book characters, and the bookend CG sequences are brief and superfluous considering the non-plot. Enemy death throws and explosions are nice, with no slowdown, and the sound is dead on with meaty thumps and colorful expletives expelled from those who are about to die. Load times are the biggest culprit, breaking up the action, which is all the club is. The club is a lot like junk food. It initially tastes good, but it won't leave you satisfied for long. Riding a 20-chain combo will get the adrenaline pumping, but putting in the time to memorize a level and climb the leaderboard ultimately never feels worth it. The club is destined for waning interest after the honeymoon is over. And at $60, it's one pricey membership.